Stop wasting material, stop missing deadlines, stop driving yourself bonkers, and start having more consistent success with your machine. These are the 10 most common CAD errors. When you have a problem, this list might just contain the solution. Number one is a lack of organization. You need to name your toolpaths and your layers, and furthermore, you need to use groups. When you're making simple designs, this isn't as important, but you need to establish best practices. By the time your skills advance, your designs progress, and you're making complicated, interesting, really excellent stuff, you will want all of that organization in those files. So start doing it right now. Number two is incorrect job origin setting. These settings are inside of the job setup panel, and you probably have a couple of regular settings. Bottom left for your XY origin, and top of stock for your Z. Those are my typicals, but there are lots of occasions when I want my XY origin to be in the center of my stock or the center of my art. Remember, whenever you are viewing a file and you hit Command N or Control N to start a new file, those job settings carry over. Oftentimes people have been viewing a file from someone else, something they've downloaded, a project they're looking at, and then they start a new file, they're inspired, they forget to go and check those job setup settings. So it's a good idea to open that job setup panel when you first start a project, as well as after you've completed all of your toolpathing and you're about to head to Carbide Motion, get into the habit of checking that panel last. Then when you load a file into Carbide Motion, the visualization will also show you your origin point as well as your toolpaths. Check that out. Be sure everything is set up physically in the real world as it is in your software so that you get the result you expect. Should you get an unexpected plunge or a crash into the side of your machine, this is the first place you need to look. Open that job setup and check out those origins. Number three is errant toolpaths. If you've designed a project, gone through all the toolpathing, maybe you've run it once and you come back to make changes. If you are gonna copy and paste and duplicate parts of your project, remember, if you leave extra art way outside of your normal project, it's still cutting those lines. You have to assign your toolpaths appropriately. So be sure and check when you do the simulation inside Carbide Create, are you wrapping to some random spot that you're not expecting? And again, you can catch this in Carbide Motion as well. It'll show you everywhere the machine is supposed to go. Number four is a cutter that is too large for the features you wanted to cut. A couple of possibilities here. Number one, an empty toolpath. That one's easy. It just tells you there's nothing for it to cut. Or if you look in the simulation and you're not getting the detail that you want, you know you're gonna have to use a smaller cutter or you're gonna have to go to some rest machining. But again, that simulation will show you what the machine is about to do. You have to decide if that's the look you were wanting. Number five, tiny tabs. Things that are not gonna hold your project stable as you cut it out or as you add features after you've already done the contour cut. You have to think about the type of material, the size of your cutter, and look at the cutting forces involved. All of those things will factor into whether your tabs are sized appropriately for the job at hand. Number six, not trusting nor using simulation. Cutting virtual wood is limitless and free. Do it, it will save you so many errors and so much frustration when things don't turn out the way you expected. Scrutinize that simulation, zoom in, analyze it, see if it's what you want, it's going to show you exactly what you're telling the machine to do. And 99.9% .9 of the time, that's what you're going to get IRL. Number seven, lack of toolpathing optimization. Sort your toolpaths, lessen the tool changes, save time and money. Simple. Number eight on our top 10 CAD mistakes is cutting outer features before cutting inner features and details. You want the part at maximum strength while you're detailing it, while you're pocketing it, while you're performing all of the operations that you want on that thing. Your outer cutout should be the last thing whenever possible. When it isn't, look up at number seven. Sort your tool paths. Go look up further. Make sure you don't have too tiny a tabs if you plan to do a little bit of machining after your contour cutout, but try and avoid it if you can. Number nine is incorrect step overs for 3D finishing. When you break out that ball end mill for the 3D finishing operation, your step over should be 10 to 15% of the stock step over. That makes it really small if you're down in a 16th or a 32nd inch end mill. Takes a lot of time, but leaves behind a lot of fine details. If you don't do that, you're gonna get a stair step effect or a line effect that looks like a 1970s broadcast. You don't want that, so make sure you have your step over set correctly. Number 10 is a failure to balance your project goals with your design and toolpathing capabilities. 
Your understanding of the software absolutely matters as to whether something can be produced. You want to be pushing your abilities all the time, trying to get better, increasing the complexity, the enjoyment of what it is that you're making. But sometimes that gap's a little too big and you have to think of strategies to shrink that gap back to a reasonable point where you can have success. So always balance those factors. There's our top 10. Want to add to it? Put the things that have been vexing you in the comments below. We'd love to know where you're struggling so we can come back to the studio with more information, ideas, and inspiration to meet your needs.